If you only knew how it began, boy, it began up in Lake Arrowhead as this woman was praying. Wouldn't you tell Thank them? God somebody was praying. <laughs> it was me out of desperation. We lived in a house on the edge of Lake Arrowhead and I would look at all the city lights and God gave me a word and he said, I'll give you treasures out of darkness and said, I want you to pray over the city. I want you to begin to understand that I'm going to take you there and you're going to start a church. I did not want a pastor no. anymore, no. anywhere, you didn't. let alone San Bernardino. No. Jim realized that God had called him to preach and he wasn't going to run from it anymore. We met at the Econo Lodge in a hotel We had 12 room. people. And we absolutely said, Lord, if this is going to be your church, you're going to have to make this happen. Uh, December 24th, Christmas Eve in our brand new building. 1989. 1989. <laughs> you know, one of the things that was happening is the church was really growing. We had gotten a hold of an altar call that God gave me. It's not because I'm anointed, it's because he told me what to say to the people. And over the years, he has built this fabulous, like she was just mentioning, a fabulous congregation. And we started getting these massive services that had, you know, hundreds of people being saved. And we had this one weekend where we had like 700 salvations. We couldn't get them out of the service fast enough through one single door. So we had to double and triple and quadruple the size of the door and so they would get out uh, fast. Everybody's out so we could dismiss the people. That's how the church started to grow. And we knew that we needed to build a building because God had spoken. What we're gonna be doing is we're gonna stop renting in a few years here. We're gonna start purchasing our own property so that we can expand the kingdom of God and build the Rock Christian Center, but more importantly, build your ministry, your children's ministry, so that there can be a foundation to reach a lost and dying, hurting world for Jesus Christ. 20 years ago, when we were looking for land, we felt like the Lord had said, San Bernardino, this is where I called you. In a bad neighborhood, in a, you know, a city that's not growing, in a city that was bankrupt. People don't want to go to. In a to. city that didn't yeah. want us, and yeah. a city that had a history of being the graveyard of pastors. And we decided that what we were gonna do is build something that's gonna be a monument to his glory. I remember when we broke ground, you know, it was rocky soil. In other words, it's really interesting. This whole area is a, is a, a bed a of rocks, it's a, river bed. Yeah, it's a and you can go up town anywhere you want, and start digging down, you got boulders. Yeah. And you know, the Bible says a lot about rocky soil. Boy, spiritually, that's what this place was, you know. And I'll never forget because Pastor Luke uh, came and he came from Bible college. I, don't, I, I haven't seen a church out there that reaches out to the people like our church reaches out to the people out here. And, and our church is not just the church, it's the World Outreach Center. And, this church is going to go somewhere. And we invited him to come and pray over the, the ground to represent the next generation. We have broken the ground. I had, every time I came over to the building as they were building it, and it was a, you know, just a skeleton of a building with walls that had been tilted up in dirt everywhere. And I remember coming and I asked God, I said, God, one of the things I want to do is I want to be alone because there's always people. Uh, I want to be alone. I want to talk to you about the building. I don't want to talk to the people. I don't want to walk around the building with people. I want to talk to you, God. Please, can you make arrangements for me to be alone with you so I can share these moments with you? And um, as I was walking through the building, here comes four people and, and they were, I don't know how to use the word, they were handicapped, I guess is a yeah, word you might want to use, and had some challenges, wow. and they were kind of together, and they had taken a bus on this hot day over here, and uh, I was, I saw them in the distance, and you know how, how un, unspiritual I am and totally carnal, I was trying to avoid them, you know, but they spotted me, and, the, and so I said, hey, how are you, and they said, oh, Pastor, Pastor, we're so happy to see you, tell us about the building, what's what and where, so I ended up for the next hour and a half walking them through the building, and I remember that this platform that we're on right now, the, which is the, in the main sanctuary, that the walls weren't here so I could see back as they were leaving and they were walking out across the dirt and you know their 
little feet were pounding on the dust and the dirt and the dirt was coming up as they were walking to the bus stop here in the corner and this hot day is probably 100 degrees and I'm here and I'm saying to God I'm just complaining like a big baby I talked to God I said God uh, I'm just so disappointed I wanted to spend this time with you I'll never forget what God said God spoke to me he said you just did I tell you when you take care of people you can expect the presence of God and that's what this church is all about it's the people that God brought to build this house. And I just want to say thank you to the people. Whether you're here or you're not here, it's all recorded in heaven and we're grateful and we're, we thank you for what you've done for this house and for this place and for the Lord through your contributions. And it's a healthy place. In order for us to stay healthy, I would like you to welcome you new lead pastors. I couldn't be happier than the generation that's coming up right now. Strong, healthy, uh, alive. Take, they took instant ownership uh, of the whole ministry. And we think this is a great place, but great people make it a great place.